Hey. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our February 12th, 2024 meeting. I'm going to just do our official um, introduction to call the meeting to order, and then we'll get started. Um, the time is now 7.07 .07 p.m., and seen as a quorum of committee members is in attendance, this public hearing is being called to order. Um, as I said, this is the February 12th, 2024 public meeting of the Amherst Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by the state legislature on July 16th of 2022. This meeting is being conducted virtually using the Zoom platform and the meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. So why don't we do a quick roll call, make sure we can all hear each other and then we will um, go into our agenda. Um, I'll just call on people to make it easy. Um, just I'm uh, Becky, I'm the chair. Um, Suzanne, just to make sure we yeah. can hear you. Great. Zoe? Oh, you're on. Sorry, you're muted. You're on mute. I apologize. Hi, I'm Zoe Sulis. I'm a committee member. Great. And Rika? Hi, present Rika Clement, committee member. Matt? Yes, Matt Larson here. I'm also trying to um, eat some dinner, so I might be Good. off uh, the video for a little while. No worries. And, um, and Nate, you're here. Yeah, hi, I'm Nate, um, a staff liaison to the committee. Great. Um, and of course, and I'm so apologetic, I have a dog barking at the door who I'm just going to let in and then we're going to jump into the meeting. Actually, one second. That's what happens when I kick everybody out of the house so I can have a quiet house for a meeting and then <laughs> I'm still stuck with the dog duties. Um, so um, tonight we are um, meeting primarily our, our um, well, our first agenda item is to look through, to talk about if, if there are any announcements, but then we will spend most of the time going through the applications um, the 2024 application review where we can um, review and prioritize the proposals, review and discuss um, potential changes to target areas and determine what our recommendations to the town manager are. And then we'll go through any items not anticipated within 48 hours um, and, um, and then have time um, at the end of this meeting for public comment. This is a meeting, not a hearing, um, but we will um, have public um, welcome public comment um, at the end. Um, and I guess I'll also just say that um, I'm just going to pull up who's here um, for attendees that we are obviously going to be talking about the, the proposals and we um, I'll just say for the people on that we have read, you can re rest assured that we've read the proposals well, um, but if you hear us talking about something that is actually incorrect, then do raise your hand because we obviously don't want to be considering something that's not correct as we're um, making our decisions. Um, but other than that, we'll we'll wait to hear from people at the end, and we will put a um, as we often do a um, three minute time limit on people's comments at the end of um, our discussion. So um, with that, I guess um, are there any announcements that people want to make before we get started? No. Okay. All right, great. So um, why don't we go in and I think um, what we often do um, and what I'd like to propose we do here is begin our conversation with the non-social service activities, um, which um, of this um, at this application round, there are just the two, um, which are the um, the Valley CDC micro enterprise project and the um, infrastructure improvements to Southeast Street um, along the East Street Common project. Um, and that project would require that we, um, I believe, um, change one of the target, change a target area so that that would be in it. Um, and so um, that's just something to consider as we go. Um, does anybody have any thoughts that they wanna share on either of those two proposals or Nate, is there anything that um, I didn't address just then that we should have in mind as we're thinking about these things? Yeah, I guess I just want to clarify, and I think I, people had said they had seen the Southeast Street one, and maybe it had been, uh, that was a previous year, but this is the North Pleasant Street. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the wrong. yeah, and I, you know, it's just funny, I try to try oh. to find where that had been mentioned, and so I just wanted to say that it's the North Pleasant Street um, multi-use path from, you know, like, 
presidential about, you know, or Hobart Lane somewhere in there north to. Yes. And I'm, you know, I, I'm reading, I think it was in the 2024 proposals outline, uh, the rubric that you gave us. Um, and I read the actual one, um, but didn't describe it right as I was just reading off the page. Um, so the North Pleasant one. Um, so, so sidewalks essentially on that, um, on North Pleasant Street in that area. Right. Correct. And that's not currently in um, one of our target areas, but um, if I am correct, it could be, Nate, is that correct? That the, it in terms be. of the income? Yeah. Okay. Do we need to vote first to change the target area before we recommend this or does it matter what order we do it in? Yeah, I can, let me share my screen and then. Um... Do we set the target areas? I thought the town did that. Well, the, uh, it, is this, uh, where am I here? Is this visible for everyone? Yep. 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 Yeah, no, the target areas are set by the committee. I mean, in the town, it's really a target area is meant to be in, um, you know, uh, a location. It can be, you know, fairly, fairly large where the town's investing other infrastructure besides CDBG. So where, you know, where we're looking at making improvements to, whether it's you know public facilities or looking at increasing housing or doing certain things, and so on this map it's a little hard to see, but there's three target areas. One is in like the magenta outline down here at Pomeroy, mm -hmm. and that included Hickory Ridge. We've had East Amherst and Orange down here, and so we've done like the Southeast Street, and um, we've done a different a number of things down here. And then the town center is outlined in red, in this kind of um, odd shape. The light green is where there's income eligible block groups, and the yellow is the outline of the, of the census block groups. And so, the the um, North Pleasant Street uh, sidewalk is in this area. And so, before Pomeroy Village was a target area, we had North Amherst um, be a target area. It's tricky because with the new um, census designation, you know, there's not much in North Amherst that's income eligible. So, for instance, we made you know up here by Cherry Hill, a block uh, target area. I mean, we have North Amherst be a target area. It's just that then the specific project would have to serve low mod. We couldn't base it on just a geographic area because there's not a majority lower moderate income. And so for the committee, it could be that the town center target area is extended and it just, it, it grows, you know, it's a bigger town center target area, or we could do a separate North Amherst. And so- I mean, Is there a limit to how many target areas we can have? <clears throat> yeah, you know, <laughs> we used to have four and the state said, can you try to keep it to three? It's meant to, it, I think they, and from their perspective, you know, they'd like to see um, within those target areas, you know, impactful uh, improvements. And so whether that's, you know, outside of block grant too. So we could say that in the town center target area, if we extend it, you know, we've been working on sidewalks, you know, we have, um, you know, the new library, we're working on a bike on bike lanes. And this, so the, the proposal is for a multi-use path on the west side. So connecting to bike lanes and then, you know, a, you know, it's also a sidewalk and then a new sidewalk on the east side. So um, I think really the, some communities have a really generous target area and it's just one, or they might have some, you know, two big ones. And so, but, if, you know, the capital projects have to be in a target area. And, um, so, and, and so if we're supposed to keep it to three, does it, matter if we um, move a target area to a new location if there's a current project going on in that target area from a prior year? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, we have the Hickory Ridge is still ongoing. Um, you know, I mean, it could be that we we extend this and say it's just a larger town center target area. You know, at one point when North Amherst was a target area, this area up here was actually income eligible. And so the thought was, oh, could we do some sidewalks or infrastructure? But since since the demographics have changed, it's harder to have this be a target area, even though we're doing, the town's doing things in North Amherst, you know, with the library and then mm -hmm. uh, maybe some field work and things at Mill River. But um, yeah, to your point, it might be strange to remove Pomeroy, uh, for instance, and then create a North Amherst one, uh, you know, just because there are there's still ongoing projects in Pomeroy. Um, well, in that case, I think I would um, move to just expand the Amherst Town Center, and then that takes care of any issues at all around that, right? Right. And you can see here where it kind of comes up, and 
covers mm -hmm. an area that was to include Olympia Oaks years ago, you know, probably like, gosh, I don't even want to say 14 years ago, but a number of years ago. And so we could, you know, extend it along some, you know, to come mm -hmm. up here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we'll take a, so I moved to do that. So we need to vote on that, right? Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'll do yep. a roll call, Becky. All right. <laughs> uh, Rika? Yes. Matt? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. Zoe? Yes. Okay. So that passes unanimously. Great. Um, so then um, we now can discuss um, the project um, as being in a place, in a location that we're actually allowed to have a, a project be. Um, so obviously we're in a situation where we have um, Valley CDC, which um, has done some great work in the past and is asking for a really um, small amount of money. And I remember last year that I did ask um, the representative whether they could use more than that. And the response was no, they've asked for exactly what they need. Um, and it looks like that's still where they're at. Um, so we could fund both Valley, Valley CDC and then give the remainder um, to the infrastructure project um, which to me makes that would be my recommendation. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. All right. Yeah. So why don't I will uh, move to vote in that way that we um, fund both activities. Um, we fund Valley CDC to the um, what it's requested for 15,000 and the remainder, which I assume is 543,000 um, to the infrastructure project on North Pleasant Street. Would it be five hundred and forty thousand if the available is five fifty five? Right. So if that, yeah, you're right, Suzanne. Okay. So I think we could just leave it as whatever the difference is, and we can. Yeah, right. The remainder too. Okay. Um. So I would move to do that. Second. Right. All right. So why don't we do a roll call? Um. Nat. I say yes. Zoe. Yes. Suzanne. Yes. Enrica had second in yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Um, okay. So now always to the, the more complicated and more complex and harder choices. Um, we'll go to the social service proposals. Um, and I just want to say, I think I've said this every time we've done this, um, just for the, I think it's good for our, our own selves to hear this and for anybody listening that um, I think we all can agree that all of the agencies that apply are doing necessary work and they're doing it well. And so this is always an incredibly difficult decision to make, um, but it's one that we signed up to make. And so we're here to do it. Um, just to remind everybody, we can fund up to five agencies, but it doesn't have to be five. So we can, we've, um, since at least I've been on the committee, we've always done five, but that doesn't mean that we have to do that. Um, and so we have the, um, the rankings that um, Nate had sent out, and I know Rika has now also has her rankings in, and I, Rika, I guess yours, um, what we could do is just sort of, as we're talking about them, you can just share your opinions um, rather than trying to change the, the spreadsheet right now. Um, and I, I was just gonna make one comment. I'm sort of curious what people have to say before we sort of ju jump into the conversation, but I was, when I was looking at the, the rubric that we had created um, and thinking about the, the categories, a lot of them seem pretty objective. Um, and the, the, ones to, the one to me that's the most subjective is project impact. Um, because I think about the sort of the, for myself, the ways to define what impact is and project impact could be the impact that the program has on a particular person or it could be the impact that the program has on the community as a whole and sort of the numbers of people that it's helping. Um, and so I ended up, I think all of these, anybody who's going to any of these organizations for assistance is going to be um, you know, highly impacted by them. So I ended up thinking about it really in terms of numbers of people who are impacted, understanding that there's always a ripple effect and there's families and all that, but each one of them did give us actual numbers of um, of who they, how many people they're actually assisting. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any comments about that or, or thought about impact differently or any of the other categories that, they, that were sort of the one that you found yourself having the most um, consideration of or thoughts about. 
I, I shared in that too, Becky, and also um, the number of people, not just that the agency helps, but the number of Amherst residents, I kind of had to use that as a factor um, in, in how I was looking at impact that particular um, score. Yeah. Uh, I did go with the same interpretation as well. I thought about it, you know, uh, long and hard, you know, and it was um, 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 uh, clearly stated, though, in a lot of the proposals, you know, the number of people that would be, in, you know, that would benefit or impacted by this. So I used the Amherst, you know, also um, category, you know, how many of the, you know, impacted clients would be residents of our area as well. Yeah, I think I think for me, uh, both project impact as well as project need were some of the biggest differentiators. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, you know, project need, um, I think I ranged from two to four, and project impact I ranged from also yeah two to four, and I think project impact for me was more about how big of an impact in the community. Uh, how many people is are being served, uh, that sort of thing, and and project need is hard to quantify because they're they're different aspect of it aspects of it. Um, but you know, so that is definitely um, subjective. But you know, if I guess I would try to imagine if something were not available, how uh, would the you know, community impacted by that. And if it seems like it would be a huge hole in the community, then that to me would be, that's a really big need. And if it's something that, well, yeah, some people would be impacted, but, you know, the community as a whole wouldn't feel it that much. Um, maybe it's not as high on community needs. So in, mm -hmm. in, in some sense, those were related, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and as I look at my scoring now, it turns out that, it pretty much, you know, the, you know, the um, low end of two was the same for project need and project impact and kind of the same for um, the high end of four. Yeah. I also looked really a lot at project need and, um, you know, impact. And I think as I look at my notes, I... I really was focused on um, impact of on the particular beneficiary as opposed to the quantity. Mm -hmm. And I think in the past, I've probably thought more about more broader community impact, but this year, I don't know, I was thinking about individual yeah. beneficiary impact. Yeah. Um, so, it's always hard to sort of get this started. I mean, it, you know, I look at this and it looks like, you know, Amherst Survival Center is sort of the the one that um, everybody has at the top of their list. Regardless, I don't have yours here, but um, that's a, an organization that I think, um, you know, fits both of those, fits the need er easily, and then also both ways of thinking about impact. Um, and then um, the sort of at the, at the bottom end of it, um, I think the, it looks like the literacy project um, well, it's more literacy project was in everybody's sort of bottom two, and then the other ones um, varied. Um, so in sort of thinking about what's in between all of those, um, you know, maybe we should just go through each a little bit and, and sort of see where we're at. Um, I, um, I will say, I, I remember when Amherst Mobile Market first applied last year, I think, or maybe two years ago, and it had not quite gotten up and running yet. And I think it was maybe reaching like 25 to 30 people with like a $5 voucher. Um, and I was so impressed by their application this year. Um, and and when I thought about impact with them, for me, I, I it was not just that they're serving 192 people with providing the um, you know, with, with food, but it's also the community. I was thinking about our, you know, the, the name of our committee, right? Community development. And that so much of what they've done is to develop what they saw the community needed and that they're staffed by people who are now 
working in the community and that they're providing an activity, you know, where they where they are. And they talked about, you know, the different um, other activities that are going on besides um, the the farmers market, the mobile market. Um, and so and so the staff, it's the staff and it's the people and it's the people who are coming to it. And it's really such a broad way of thinking about community and thinking about impact. So I was really um, impressed by them and um, and put them really like way toward the top of my list. Um, I don't know if other people have thoughts they want to share about that or um, where people thought about. I was going to say, I could share my screen just to show what we have um, in the spreadsheet form. If that's visible for everyone. Mm -hmm. The um, So some of the rankings, I just, you know, each row is a ranking. So uh, for some, it was, you know, the a clear one through five or one through six and some, you know, for instance, instance, this one had survival center, mobile market and outreach as a kind of a tie for one. This one had a lot tied for two. And so, like I said, I think the, you know, I don't think there was a, um, it doesn't seem like there was a big spread in how they were reviewed. And so, you know, maybe there is one or two. So usually, right, we'd say one or two seem like they rise to the top and then there's some middle and then a lower reviewed one. And so I don't know if, you know, I can always type in another column as we're talking, if we want to start, you know, putting things down in an order or, you know, other things and can, um, and assign, um, you know, dollar values to them once we get to that point. So one, one thing that, that I was trying to do to, um, because as you said, um, there are different ways people did this. So three tied for first or, um, five tied per second and how to you know, make sense or not make sense, but how to um, um, sort of combine uh, those rankings into something um, that reflected each respondent. And I guess the way I looked at it was if we just divided it between like first rank and second rank. So for example, uh, in column D, Amherst Survival Center is ranked number one, and everything else is ranked number two. In column A, we have three organizations ranked one, and then the rest, I guess, would be ranked number two. And like in column B, Survival Center, Big Brothers, and Family Outreach would be ranked number one in the top half, and then the other three would be ranked number two. So if when I did it that way and gave each one a numerical, either one or number two, then um, it turned out that the average was survival center was average of one, family outreach was average of 1.25, big brothers, big sisters, average of 1.5, mobile market, average of 1.75, and then both Center for New Americans and Literacy Project were both um, average of two. So kind of, you know, my thinking was that that kind of gave a, um, you know, spectrum of how people viewed them, whether they ranked, you know, one through five or one at the top and then the rest tied for second. Yeah, my rankings would be along that same line. I actually, um, I didn't have the survival center number one, partly because even though they do amazing work and they really serve a lot of people, I also see that they have a lot of places to go for resources. And so I, I didn't have them number one, but they're certainly in my top three. But I, I, that was helpful in that, your uh, analysis of it. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, in that, that yeah, in that, in that example, if they were in your um, top three, then they would be given a rank of one in this kind of simplistic. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah. So then my top one, my, my number one would be as yours were, as you described. So if we sort of looked at that as guiding the conversation, um, we're in an, we have you know two organizations 
<clears throat> tied for that fifth spot, both of which, right, who have the, <clears throat> excuse me, both with the two. Um, and, uh, but one of which ended up in the very bottom. It looks like, I mean, if, if the rankings, if we went, like, broke down two into further rankings, um, Literacy Project, I think, would end up lower than Center for New Americans if we sort of redid it at that point. Um, so I guess just sort of in terms of, does anybody want to make a, a pitch for funding the literacy project, given kind of where it ended up here? Uh, I do want to make a pitch for um, the literacy project. I feel that once we take care of our basic needs, which is food insecurity, once we really you know, deal with this piece, you know, the next level of really you know, breaking a cycle um, of poverty is um, achieving self-sufficiency and kind of, you know, maintaining, um, you know, at that level. So you definitely, you know, you definitely need um, an agency or an organization who could really work with, um, you know, people to um, get to that level. So um, it serves a very, I think, um, um, needed, um, um, it's a very needed um, area, you know, that we should not overlook. Yeah, I, I agree. And and I think the way I've always seen Center for New Americans and Literacy Project is, yeah. is you know, there, you know, there are some differences in what they do. Um, but I guess most the most basic description of um, helping uh, people get um, education and jobs and integrated into society. Um, they're very, very similar in what they do. And in the past, because of their similarity, we've typically not um, granted funds to both. And we've kind of chosen one or the other because we can only choose five. And it's been a tough you know, uh, decision to not um, fund everyone. But in the past, we've kind of given to one or the other. And the one thing that um, I can't help but take into account is that in the last um, grant cycle, um, we gave 30,000 to Center for New Americans, but none to the Literacy Project. And so I guess if, if we are not able to fund both in this round, um, I think that my preference would be to be able to fund the Literacy Project because um we gave the you know kind of two year uh, funding previously to the center for new americans but that's so i'm just looking at so they each are asking for 20,000 um and it looks like i mean and i'm happy to be corrected if i'm wrong but the literacy project indicated that they they would impact 20 people and center for new americans in, indicated they could impact a hundred people uh, or serve a hundred people, a um, hundred Amherst residents and Literacy Project was 20 Amherst residents. Um, and so that for me was, cause um, now I agree, we've always sort of we've just gone back and forth kind of recognizing. Um, so for me, that was where my thoughts went to fund Center for New Americans if we were gonna just do one of the two. I think there's an argument also that can be made that given sort of what's going on globally and the huge number of, of new Americans who are coming to our area that both of these organizations are providing such an, a timely um, need or, or filling such a timely need that um, maybe this is the year that they both got funded. Um, uh, why Becky, you, so you would propose funding both of them, even though they're in the bottom? I'm definitely not making any proposals. <laughs> oh, okay, just, okay. Just saying, I mean, I could imagine, because it's true, we've always sort of gone back and forth. Um, yeah. And I think the numbers suggest that if we were only going to fund one, it would be Center for New Americans, because, just because of the impact from my perspective, but that it might be the year when we fund both. One thought I, I did have is, I mean, I would probably, I would propose that we fund the Center for New Americans because of the, the greater number of people that um, the organization helps. Last year, it was 30,000 because it was two, a two-year cycle. So 
if we thought about just one year of that could be 15,000, or if we wanted to fund the literacy project, I was thinking it could be a percentage of what they were asking based on the percentage of people that they um, help, you know, if it's 20 people or their proposals at 57%. Um, but so that was just some of some of my thoughts about those two particular organizations. Did people print out the rubric? Do you all have that in front? I mean, the what um, what we're screen sharing right now? Do people generally have access to that? Yeah. Yes. So can we can we not screen share so we can see each other? Sure. Or if people go with that, okay, good. Just easier okay. to have this kind of conversation so we can pretend. Yeah. My <laughs> notes, I, I see that literacy project in my notes, it was 35 students, 20 of whom were Amherst. Right. Yeah. Um, what was the percentage of Amherst out of the 100 beneficiaries for Center for New Americans? That was, yeah. 100 was Amherst. Okay, okay, so thank you. Yeah. And then 85% of them, or 85 of them, or 85% are low income. Perfect. Right, okay. So if we um, were to do both of those, obviously, I mean, essentially we need to, if we decide we want to do five organizations as we sort of historically have, we have to pick one that's not getting funded this year, right? Um, and so that's, um, I mean, we can, I guess, just go through them and and see, and that's that will be the hardest decision before we figure out who's, um, how much everybody's getting. Um, so, um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Well, so just um, on the, the rankings that we had uh, put together, <clears throat> um, both Center for New Americans and the Literacy Project had the average of two. And then the next lowest one was Amherst Mobile Market at 1.75. Um, so going by that, if we say, well, how about Amherst Mobile Market? Would they be a candidate for elimination at this point? And I would, you know, one argument in favor of eliminating mobile market is that, well, Survival Center covers the, um, you know, kind of food security, nutrition supplement um, um, needs in Amherst to such a great extent that, um, you know, the community wouldn't be so impacted if we didn't fund the mobile market. They would be on their own to um, do whatever they could. That's one argument. Um, but on the other hand, I agree with what I think Becky and maybe others have said too, that, that I was impressed by the application, by the mobile market and the strides that they've made over the last couple of years and, um, you know, becoming an independent 501c3, you know, I feel like, exactly. I like to, yeah, I would like to support that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so again, it, so it's hard for me to say, um, even though Survival Center does really cover so much of the you know, does such a great job of of meeting the uh, nutritional needs out there um, to the extent they can. Um, it's still hard for me to eliminate mobile market, but others might feel differently. I, I would I oh, would be ahead. reluctant to eliminate mobile market. I, I would I would prefer to eliminate either Center for New Americans or Literacy Project personally. Same. I agree, Rika. I was just, I think there may be people that use the mobile market that don't use services at their survival center or aren't quite ready to use services at the survival center, or this is a lot more convenient and available sometimes than having to get to the survival center, even though they do have, you know, some delivery, but I would advocate that we keep the mobile market. And based on the number of people um, that the, you know that they've grown to be able to the number of shares that they have, right? Their impact is much larger than the literacy project. Yeah, and I think I mean I sort of said this before. I think you know having watched them grow from being, we've, yeah. we've watched their impact grow. You know, just as Amherst residents, um, and I think that this committee supporting um, supporting that is important in recognizing that. Um, okay, so if we put Amherst Mobile Market on the definite list over here, I'm just making notes. So then um, if we go to um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I would definitely like them on the yes. I, I they're, they're the ones who I look at as, you know, that individual benefit is so 
tremendous. I and and they're the only one on the list that that is you know aimed at um, youth. youth, right? So right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So true. Yeah. Okay. Um, family outreach. Yes, I I I would like to see them. I think. I mean, when I you know they're when they talked about prior to August. 2022, three to five requests for help a week, and now five a day. I thought hmm, we need to fund them. Yeah. And housing security is such a big problem, and seems to be only getting worse with yeah. affordability and and lack of yeah. right of inventory and just keeping people in their homes. What they've been doing is just you know amazing. And I they I think serve such a unique need to cover such a huge right range of. Um, I mean, from eviction legal issues through who need, does anybody have an extra mattress that they can live right. with this family? Um, I, I would keep them. Okay. Um, okay, so we are then down to selecting from between Center for New Americans and the Literacy Project. If we, um, it sounds like the, the other four are all ones that everybody's in agreement should be on that list. Um, I think the comments that a couple of you've made already about just what's happening in the country makes me lean towards Center for New Americans over Literacy Project, in addition to the greater impact. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I mean, two things. One, the Literacy Project is now only... Um, virtual Online. for Amherst, there may be um, a physical location at some point in the future. And I you know that is possible to do this. Um, it is different than the other proposals. Uh, and that, you know, it's not, you know, there's not a, um, a, you know, a physical site in town. And that could be one piece. And then, you know, I, I, I was going to mention that there is, you know, an ongoing complaint with the survival center and someone not receiving service on whether or not they're following the proper policies and rules there. And so that's something that's ongoing that the town's looking into and, you know, determining how to proceed. It may or may not affect how you review the survival center's food pantry tonight, but there is something that, you know, staff is looking into. Mm -hmm. And um, Nathaniel, what, when do you anticipate that that situation at the survival center would be resolved? Yeah, I, I'd like to think it could be resolved in the next two weeks. Uh, so, you know, as part of the committee's review, you make recommendations to the town manager and then you know, the town manager may, you know, I'm assuming is aware of this. And so, um, you know, and it could be that the town manager decides to, you know, modify the recommendations or, you know, seek something. Um, you know, I, you know, we don't, there isn't, there aren't too many proposals this year. It's kind of interesting. There's only six. Um, so it does make it a little tricky. Uh, but yeah, I think the town manager would, would, uh, you know, review anything that the, you know, committee does and anything else that comes out of the this dispute resolution. Yeah. Well, it strikes me that if there's if there's mm -hmm. a, a you know individual dispute, I'm sure there are channels to address that. So I think my feeling is that we can let um, that proceed under whatever channels are appropriate. And this is kind of a different dimension, and we can proceed and you know with our review. I agree. Um. Okay, so um, it sounds like we, well, actually, let's just make sure, does anybody, um, so right now it looks like, um, well, I guess I should, it looks like we're leaning towards Center for New Americans over the Literacy Project, but I want to give anybody an opportunity to. Um, no, I, I, I made I made the one the one case for Literacy Project, but I'm you know, persuaded by the other views for Center for New Americans, so that's, that's fine with me. Okay. And Zoe, how are you feeling about that? Uh, I do um, feel good um, about that as well. I um, both are fulfilling the need for um, self-sufficiency, which is I see it as a the next logical step after we take care of our, you know, your other uh, other needs. Um, and um, I can, you know, I can be behind this decision. Okay, right. So um, I guess. Um, Probably the first thing is to move to accept the groups and then we'll talk about money. Nate, does that make the most sense? Is that how we usually? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like there's consensus, but we could have a, you know, maybe a motion and a vote and then right, go, go to the funding piece. Okay. 
Um, so I moved then that the five organization that we give to five organizations that those five organizations would be the Amherst Survival Center, Big Brothers Big Sisters, Center for New Americans, the Amherst Mobile Market, and Family Outreach of Amherst. Anyone want a second? Second. Okay, great. And now I'll do a roll. Um, Matt? Uh, yes. Zoe? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. Great. Okay. I think because Rika seconded, that counts. Okay, terrific. So now we can talk about money. Um, and um, this is where I turn to Nat because I'm hoping that you have some spreadsheet that you're looking at right <laughs> now that you've created this whole represented situation. So um, it, it, it's really only a, a starting point, but I'm I'm happy to um, share it. Great. Um, so the we have um so with the five that have been you know uh voted right. the, if you add up their all all the requests it's two hundred and twenty two thousand so it's more than you know what can be funded um and the total because we, we have, have 185. one eighty five one is it 185 or 195? one ninety five I think it's well my spreadsheet says one eighty five. Yeah, sorry, the state increased the grant amount to 925 yep. uh, after the fact. It's for all for all minis. So um so I guess is that still 185? Am I 185? Yeah. It was 20%. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was trying to run do that quickly. Okay. For some Wait, reason so I think 195, right? But 185, yeah. 185 is the correct number? Yep. Okay. Um, oh, so can I share my screen with this? <clears throat> oh. oh, I guess I can't share my screen. Oh, oh, sorry. You know what? Let me. Um, Nate just... can allow you to do that. I think. Yeah. All right. Try that again, Nat. It should be. Okay. Um, so can you see this? Yeah. Under under yeah. funding recommendations. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is just a starting point but and you see the um, percentages here and so these are these are kind of roughly um, the way the rankings went so survival center was highest ranked and so the number 67,000 here is 89 percent and family outreach was second ranked and their number 42,000 is 84 percent and big brothers was third ranked and so their number here at 32,000 is 80 percent and mobile market um, was next ranked and so their number 29,000 is 78 percent and Center for New Americans was bottom rank. And so the number 15,000 is 75%. So it's not, not really a mathematical formula as much as it is kind of putting in numbers and ranking them according to the um, you know, scale uh, one to two uh, average that we um, had done earlier. So that's just a Starting point. I don't know what people think about those numbers. I guess I'm I'm curious to see if we just I mean now that we've decided that these five are worthy of funding, if we looked at the same percentage across the board. I mean, to that's fund what that would be. Yes, I I agree with that because I feel like while we've ranked them, they're all doing really good work, and it's very hard to rank them. And if <clears throat> you know, essentially, we have about they. 83%, I mean, 185 is 83% of 222,000. So if we 
funded each of them at that percentage, I, I would I'd like to see what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. So that would be. Wow, you are a whiz at Excel. Amazing. But wait, that can't be right for the survival. So no, oh, it can't oh, be right. right. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I got the the wrong. Uh... It's 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 of column C, right? Okay. Oh, that. Get this right here. Tariqa, what were you? Sorry, I missed. What were you asking? A prorated amount based on? Well, I was just saying. If we have we have a total of one hundred and eighty five thousand, right? The request total two hundred and twenty two thousand, right? Mm -hmm. One hundred and eighty five is oh, right. about eighty three percent of two hundred and twenty two. So I was thinking, if we funded everybody at that percent, we'd get to a one eighty five. So when I look at it, it's more like sixty two thousand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um... Okay. Here is six, I was taking into account hip. What, what is that not right? What don't we want to divide the request by uh, yeah, most so part times eighty three percent? Yeah, which would come out to be sixty two two fifty, I think. Yeah. There, yeah you there you go. Well, that comes out to 200. Oh, sorry. Not this one. Right. So then, yeah. So it's very close. close. Yeah. Very yeah. So that's the, um, yeah. And so the. But that's actually giving. Oh, no. Never mind. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong problem. Yeah. So there's not, not that much difference if we gave everyone the same percentage. I think I prefer this version of it. I think it's more in line with how I was thinking about the work of each of the organizations. Um, I think based on the way that the rankings were done because so many people had the same number ones or the same number twos, it's probably the fairest way to do it because it wasn't a clear one, two, three, four, five, six right. for everybody. Yeah. Um, so I think if everybody gets the same pool yeah. or yeah. portion of the pool. <laughs> right. It seems like a fair and equitable way of doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I think the, the main argument against doing it that way is that it gives an incentive or rewards um, mm. an ask that is maybe disproportionate, right? So if you... Um, yeah. but but in looking at these numbers, it's hard for me to say that any of these is really you know disproportionate or out of line. I don't yeah. when you say disproportionate, disproportionate to what? Well, to what's realistic. So for example, what they received in in the past, for example, right? So if um, in the past, big brothers, big sisters has received, you know, 30, 35,000, let's say, and they came in asking for 60,000 because there's a, a system where they can receive 83% of what they asked for. There's an incentive just to ask for a really, really big amount. But on, on these numbers, I guess I don't really see that as actually happening. But, so, it, is, but it is a big bump for some of these from what we did fund previously. So family outreach, if we were looking, if it was a two-year grant and we funded 73,000, half of that is not 41,000. So it, it is a little bit of a bump. I still think it's fair. I think it's a good way to do this. I just think it's a it, that argument could be made. But and I haven't looked back at what they'd asked for in the past, but but um 
I was just looking at what we recommend, what we yeah, recommended right. last year. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't look to me superficially that anyone has asked for anything kind of outrageous or, yeah. you know, so. Um, yeah. And I think, know. I mean, I, pr I appreciate that, Nat. I think that you're right to, to point that out. Um, and it, but since it's something that we can, since we're not setting in stone that this is how we're going to do it right. forever, we can always right. fix that should that be an issue going forward. Um, meanwhile, you know, each of these organizations, I'm sure, could use quadruple what they're actually asking for. <laughs> exactly. Um, so right. if you look at their budgets, they are not yeah. having anything. No, one is, no, no one's buying a yacht. Um, all right. So does anybody have any other thoughts on this before we vote? Anybody want to suggest any other way of dividing it? I mean, there is a a little bit, you know, seven hundred and uh, forty dollars. Seven forty could be. Uh, so if I if I add seven forty to Survival Center, that I cannot believe you can work Excel so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks great. I mean, is there, um, I mean, would we add, you know, at some point we've said that say Center for New Americans or, you know, is there a, a amount that it would be difficult to achieve what they had put in their proposal? You know, I know that's not a big amount that we're adding, but, you know, if it's a, a position um, or something is that, you know, would it make a difference if we had different funding amounts? Right, or does $750 mean more to one organization than another organization? Sure. I mean, I think it probably does, um, but I don't know how we begin. Right, to figure that out. Yeah. Right, or yeah. we just give everybody 200 Some of more it. and then we're not even, everybody 150 more. 148 each. 148 each, why don't we just yeah. do that? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. I'm so glad there are people who are good at math on this committee and I just wanna call you guys out and say, I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, we found his ceiling. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that looks great. Great. Um, okay. Any more thoughts before we take a vote? Great. Okay, great. Well, I move that we accept the Excel spreadsheet that we're all looking at right now. Um, Column E. <laughs> final decision. <laughs> Second. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Let's see. Zoe? Uh, yes. Suzanne? Yes. Matt? Yes. Enrica? Yes. Great. Wonderful. Um, so, Nate, if we can um, take off, um, stop screen sharing, and then we um, yeah. can go into um public comment yeah um before we do that so i will i just wanted to say that i'll, I'll take these recommendations and forward them to the town manager there's a public hearing at the end of the month on the 29th where we would uh you know have comment on the recommendations that may or may not be changed by the town manager and so the idea is to have 
comments on the recommended activities that are part of the grant application. And then the grant is due um, in late March. Uh, it was pushed back a little bit. Um, and so then we'll, you know, I would just work on that application. The, um, as part of the public hearing, we can also receive comments on the change in the target area. So I think that'll be some of it as well. Just the, the modification of that target area. Um, and uh, I think that's it. I just wanted to make a note of that. Okay, great. And now, um, thanks for the spreadsheet. I, I copied it down, so I have that as well. Okay. Um, so if um, if anybody who is an attendee wants to make um, a public comment, if you raise your hand, then Nate can bring you in. We'll give a couple of seconds here for people to raise their hands. And if not, then um, OK, are you I don't see any hands raised, but I don't know. Do you see? OK, um, OK. Um, in that case, are there any um, issues anybody wants to raise that we did not anticipate within the last 48 hours or occurring with that did occur within the last 48 hours? Okay, um, then I think we are all set and we can adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Becky, very efficient right. meeting. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. So we meet back on February 29th um, and Nate, you'll be in touch with us between now and then regarding the town manager's review, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Great. Um, terrific. See everybody on the 29th. Thanks for all your hard work. Yes. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.